So today we're going to learn how to actually hold the butter properly because everyone has some certain preferences. You see some butters, they have left hand low. So they actually use more left arm. Huh? Some people use like that. It's called this a claw grip. So I used to use this for quite a while. We use more elbow. Some people have conventional. But for me, the most important part of your hand is actually this right finger. This long right finger. We call this the trigger finger. Why? So when I place my this finger on this hand, it's the longest at the end. So this finger, if you look at the finger, we call these digits. Huh? Digit 1, digit 2, digit 3. When I bend this finger down, I put this line in between my digit 2 and 3 at the edge of the butter. Uh, Jonathan was saying that he puts his finger down like that at the side. This is fine also. So if you choose to do that, make sure everything is flush or slightly slanted. I don't want it to be over the edge. So we call this a lifeline on the right hand. So you can see this lifeline below my right hand, right? So if I put this index finger down at the side, and I put in between the line, that's how I hold it with the right hand. We never put it below the palm. Because if you do that, you will pull your part a lot. Okay, so when I put it up like this, right? Let the butter then go down. That's how we actually hold the butter. So you bring it up like that. And if you part feeling like this, you can feel your right wrist is locked. You're going to struggle with distance control. So as I put my right hand down, I can tap gently on the ground. So let's try right hand first. You will feel that when I hold this index finger and in this lifeline, when I put down, I let it tap. I can bring the putter back and then when you hit the ball right, it feels like most of the weight of the putter is doing the job. You should feel like your hand has no strength to guide the hit, it's more like use the weight of the putter hit. So you should feel like that when you hit the ball. They shouldn't be there and then if I let it go, if I bring it shorter, that's how we feel the weight of the hit putting. So that's rule number one. We always part with the weight of the butter head. Left hand same. If you look at your left hand life line, right? I call this happy valley. Yeah. I put the butter through the happy valley. My left index finger also does the same. So let's put two of them together now. You see the way I put, can you see that it's almost against the line of my life line? So that's how you hold the butter. You all can do 10 finger putting grip. You can do overlap grip. Up to you. You want to do this, this, doesn't matter. As long both are in the life line. We don't straighten the arm. We hit the elbow to the side of the body. You can put in front, you can put at the side, up to you. I prefer slightly in front of the body. So you can see this is in front, this is at the side. I prefer in front. Yeah, like almost in the side of your ribcage right there. Then from there, with this part here, I'm just going right, left, right. So when you move, we only move from the upper body, the hips don't really move. This is hip smooth. I squat down like one to punk side like that. Okay, you can feel your thighs are locked. I only move the upper body only. I like to stand a bit wider because I want to lock my hips. So I'm going to put this down, bend from my hips. When I come to this position, I should be able to gently tap to the ground like that. My chest will move back. You will feel a very light feeling when you hit the ball. Okay, give it a go. Don't gauge. Feel. We go by feel first. <laughs> I'll tell you why this is important. When you play different courses, the speed will be different. So I never believe in steps. I go back home, I practice this amount like that, I, this is 10 steps. But what you go to a green that is much slower or become 15 steps. Then you got double breaker line up and down, you're like, whoa, 10, 15, 20, 30. Then by the time you put your head really... <laughs> this is the power of the eye. Throw the ball to me. Okay, throw the ball to me. You want to walk to me and count steps and then throw the ball to me? No what? Right? Because you roughly know how far to throw the ball, right? Unless you really cannot gauge distance, then no choice. But... <laughs> this is how I actually do it. Let's say I already have my line. I look at where I want to part. Go through my setup. You can look at the zone one or, or twice. The moment your eyes comes back to the ball, you hit the part, and then you look. So when we come out to the hole, we look at the hole. I like to feel in between my feet. So I'll stand in between my part like this. If I don't feel any side is higher, I know that this is straight or flat. Which means that even if I part the ball slightly to the right, if I have just nice speed, ball will still drop. So you can see I don't have to be perfect. I just need to have good knowledge of green reading. Now when I part, the first thing I do is I listen for the sound. Do you see my eyes? What did I do? Never, never turn. Yes, I'll, I'll never look at where the part source. My line may change because maybe I read wrongly, but my routine always the same. I set up, I trust the line, I just 
So the number one thing I want you to do is listen for it. On your eyes, you just have to focus on this contact point of the ball. Some people look in front, I like to look just before the line, so that when I make contact with the ball, it's always square. Let's talk about setup first. There's a term, it's called chip putt. I hold in my lifeline. You can set up square, you can set up close, you can set up open. Basically, the ball is just gonna come out different. And then I'm gonna let this drop down like a putter. Put this arm in front of me. I'm gonna bend over my hips. But before that, one slight change. Left shoulder lower than right. When I put this down, when my left shoulder is lower than right, you will feel like that your left shoulder feels like this. But actually, from the front on, my shoulders are level. Now from there, I'm just gonna feel like my shoulders are bringing the cockpit up, not in. Not out, just back straight up. Then as I swing through, I just feel like this left shoulder bring comes up just a little bit. Take a look like that. How about pitch shot? I got seven match, I set up slightly open. Very, very similar. So the back swing feels like this. So you hold the club and go like. And you just hold like that. Then that's it. Then you won't be worried to figure out, oh, am I outside or inside? Some of you may choose to put straight arm. Also can. So I might stand a bit further away. Then I just move like a putting stroke back. I can't possibly make much mistakes. Today we're going to learn a technique called AKHS. Ankle, knee, hip and shoulder. What do you think I'm referring to? It's the length of swing. The length of swing will determine how far you carry the ball. So in chipping and pitching, landing spot is the most important, not so much of the total distance. So I'll just demonstrate briefly, ankle to ankle. I'm going to swing one where the top head is going to be no higher than my ankle height. I'm going to switch it up to 9 iron with an ankle to ankle motion. It very rarely you will land further because the 9 has lesser loft mark. So what happens is the ball comes out lower, it will release a bit further. So if I were to use a sand wedge, what do you think I'm playing this ankle to ankle shot to? Yeah, maybe to a pin that's, that's nearer to us, right? So as you move out all your clubs using ankle to ankle, most of the time the ball will land in the same area, just that you will roll out. So I'm going to demonstrate a knee to knee now and let's just see where the ball ends up. Slightly further, right? What if I do knee to knee for 9 iron? We'll go quite far, right? Yeah, so basically I can hit a lot of pin positions, anything below my knee height, depending on the club that I use. This will save you some headache because the larger swing that you use, the less accurate, there are a lot of funny things that goes on. So, chip and run is always below the knees. Next, today we're going to learn pitching. So pitching means hip height to shoulder height, never above shoulder height. Above shoulder height will be bunker and flop shot. So same, I'm going to do this, that, but now I'm going to put it at the back of my stance first and I'm going to do hip to you see how the ball carry a bit higher now? How do I make the ball go higher? We open the club face. That's one. Ball position to the left, that's two. So I will make it easier. As long as you see the shaft neutral. So if I do this right, if the shaft neutral is leaning forward. We want the shaft to be straight down. Pitching, we always try to get the shaft straight down. Neutral, ball position more in the middle. Why do you think that shouldn't look very important? It has to create your pressure. People say, oh, you must put pressure on your left feet. Put pressure on your left feet. This is what it means. But there's some people, they put pressure left feet this way. That shoulder high, pressure like that. What happens if I were to make contact with the ball? I have a big chance to duff and blade the ball. So this encourages you to naturally descend on the ball without you trying to make an effort to hit down. Okay, so open up one o'clock. Pressure left, shoulder, to shoulder. Do you all realise sometimes you duff a little bit, the ball still go, like the club glides through? That's the work of the toe. But if you hit it off the heel, the girls will get club stuck. Whereas the toe, it will glide through. So I'll show you one really interesting shot. I'm going to tilt it like that. Can you see I'm only using the toe? Now, ball is embedded. Generally, if you're around the green, you don't want this, huh? Right, you want a bit more toe-ish. Everything same. You don't want to do anything special. Just stand more straighter, allow to use more of the toe. Everything we learned today is all upright, upright, upright. Bunker is more upright or more down. 
Down, 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 down. Correct, down. No upright. Uh. Upright can, uh, but upright the ball come up very high and very soft. If I go more down, you can see the, the reaction of the ball comes out. So, why got bunker board? Bunker board is to teach you how to use bounce. When you enter the bunker, first thing you can set up, I prefer a nice wide stance where you activate your quads. This is the most important part. Uh. <laughs> then, these quads are activated. You can feel like they're tight. I'm going to set my hands low towards the heel of the club. So I'm just going to make a swing through the bunker board. Once that's done, you do maybe five times. Put sand. Splash the sand away from the board. Some of you might struggle splashing sand, so I suggest that you learn how to hinge a little bit. Once that's done, place the cherry on top of the ice cream. What do you think I'm actually hitting here now? Very good, I'm hitting the board. I'm not hitting the sand. I can even hit just the beginning of the board, the ball will still fly out. Bunker, we never hit ball. The moment you hit ball, you shout ball. <laughs> then, practice on a normal bunker. Because now when you put the ball on the bunker, your focus is no longer trying to hit the ball. Already. You see how far I hit behind? How do you? I square the face, square the face up. more of the heel, and sharp V, immediately up, up, just swing normal, just hinge immediately up. Oh, hinge, hinge. hinge immediately up and just hit down. 